Hello, and welcome back. In this lecture, we'll add Webpack to our build process. Webpack takes care of loading modules, and it also bundles all our code into a single file so that the browser can load it in a single HTTP request. The first thing we need to use Webpack is, as you can guess, install it using npm. So let's run npm install dash dash save dash dev Webpack and the current version is 1.13.1. .1. Please check which version to use in the text file provided. Now, Webpack by default only supports JavaScript code, but we are using TypeScript, so we need an additional package for that. Webpack uses loaders to load files of different types, as we'll see when we get to the configuration part. One Webpack loader that supports TypeScript is TS Loader. So let's install that package. The version is 0.8.2 currently. Right, so if we look at our package.json, we'll see that it added Webpack and TS Loader because we passed the save dev option. So we now have the Webpack command in the npm bin folder. We can run it directly from there if we want to, if we pass dash dash help, we see the list of all supported options. But for Webpack to do something useful, we need to write a configuration file first. Let's go and create this file that by default is called webpack.config.js. Note that it's a JavaScript file. It's not a JSON file like the other configuration files we have. In fact, this is a node module that uses the CommonJS module format. The way it works is that we can import the Webpack module by writing require Webpack and assigning the result to a Webpack variable. So that's how we can access the Webpack functionality in this file. Then to export something, we write module.exports equals and whatever we want to export. In this case, for Webpack, we need to export a configuration object, so it's just a JavaScript object. This CommonJS format is one of the module formats created before the ES6 module standard when the import and export statements did not exist. Now, here we need to specify a few settings. The first one is entry. This is the entry point of our application. In our case, it's source main.ts, and we need to put dot slash in front of it to make sure it's looked up in this folder. Next, we need an output configuration that is a nested object with a path. That's the folder where to generate the files. In this case, we want dist inside this folder, and then a file name that as a start, we can set to app.bundle.js, for example. So Webpack will generate this app.bundle.js file inside the dist folder. Next, since we're using TypeScript, we need to configure the TS loader. That's the extra package we installed with npm. Loaders are inside the module configuration object. So we have module, then loaders, that is an array of objects, where each object has a test property that is a regular expression. In this case, we want to match any string that ends with .ts. And then we specify the loader, that is ts. We can write the full name of the package if we want to, that is ts-loader but we can omit loader for simplicity. So what we're saying here is that any files that end in .ts should be loaded using the ts loader. Finally, we need a resolve object with the extensions array that lists all the extensions that should be processed by Webpack. By default, Webpack handles anything that doesn't have an extension, so the extension is an empty string, that's typically folders, and .js for JavaScript. Additionally, for this project, we want .ts files that are TypeScript. And that should work as a start. So if we go back to our terminal, we can now run Webpack and pass the dash dash progress option just so that it prints something while it's doing stuff. And after a little bit, 
it says it has created our app.bundle.js that is 1.5 megabytes in size. So if we look in the test folder, we still have the old files as well. I should have deleted the whole folder first. But anyway, there is this new app.bundle.js that contains lots and lots of stuff. Basically, what Webpack does is start with main.ts because that's the entry point we configured. So Webpack loads main.ts, runs it through TS loader that calls the TypeScript compiler to convert it to JavaScript code. Then Webpack looks at which other modules are used by main.ts. And since main.ts imports bootstrap from Angular platform browser and app component from our app.component module, Webpack then loads Angular platform browser and app.component. And then again sees which other modules each one of those files imports and keeps going until it loads all of the modules used by our application. So in this file, we have not just our own code, but all the Angular code referenced from our code and the RxJS code used by the Angular code, for example, and so on. And that's why it's a pretty big file. Now let's see if it actually works. Let's open index.html and instead of main.js, let's set the script source to app.bundle.js. Now let's reload the page in the browser and it's not working yet. The error says that the reflect metadata shim is required. Now reflect metadata is one of the libraries we have in our dependencies. So why is it not available? Well, that's because Webpack didn't include any of the reflect metadata JavaScript code in the generated app.bundle.js. And the reason for that is that we never explicitly import anything from reflect metadata in our code. Reflect metadata provides some global objects that we just expect to be there. We never import them. It's kind of like a prerequisite. And the same applies to core.js, like we mentioned talking about the promise object, and zone.js is also the same. So we can force Webpack to include all these required libraries by explicitly importing them into our code. Let's do that in main.ts. Before anything else, we import core.js. Note that we are importing the whole module here, not just a single name like bootstrap from platform browser, for example. Then we need to import reflect metadata and zone.js. But zone.js is a bit special. We need to import test slash zone.js inside the zone.js package. If we just import zone.js, it complains that it's not a module. That's because it's packaged in a slightly different way from the other ones. Anyway, if we save this file and we go and run Webpack again, this time let me delete the dist folder first. So we start from a clean state and then run webpack dash dash progress and wait a few seconds. It took slightly longer than before and generated a bigger file. It's two megabytes now compared to 1.5. That's because the bundle includes more stuff. Anyway, if we reload our web page again, it's not working yet, but the error is different. This time it says the selector my app did not match any elements. So basically it cannot find the my app tag. Now this is just because we're loading the JavaScript here before the my app tag. So when the JavaScript code runs, it tries to find an element called my app, but the browser hasn't loaded yet. To fix this, we could change our main.ts to only call bootstrap after the DOM content loaded event files, like we did in a previous example, or we can also move this script at the end of the file, like just before the closing body tag. This also works because the script will be loaded after the rest of the page has been loaded. If we refresh our page, yay, it's finally working. At this point, we can go and change our build script in package.json so that instead of running the TypeScript compiler, we run webpack dash dash progress. And now in our terminal, we can check that it works. Let's delete the dist folder first 
and then type npm run build and this runs webpack that will generate our bundle and if we refresh the page now it still works good let's stop here for this lecture we've seen how to add and configure webpack to bundle all our code into a single file and take care of loading modules as well in the next lecture we'll see how to create a more optimized build for production so our bundle will be less than the two megabytes we get at the moment also, we'll see how to use the Webpack Dev Server. I'll see you later.